Wait, that's what happened after a couple of years of doing this and helping people become better fault finders. I was called out. I was called out yesterday um, with a voltage drop measurement that I do across a fuse. But I do a voltage drop measurement across a fuse when a car doesn't sleep to see which control unit is still drawing current. And I'm going to cover it. I thought rather than get all pissy about it, I thought I'll do a video because the person who made it made the comment. Perhaps they don't know that this is actually a good way of doing a battery drain test for a unit that is either not sleeping or a unit that is hardware is broken and it won't sleep or it just is drawing current because there's a fault on the circuit board, you know. So, here's the comment. Flash it on the screen there, you can have a read of that. So, it's a valid point. What he's saying is, all I'm doing is a voltage drop. I am doing, across the fuse. I'm using both multimeter probes on a positive connection, therefore I'm measuring the voltage drop. That's okay, you can do that on a bulb, can't we, and stuff like that. That's absolutely true. However, what the guy's saying now after that, what's uh, totally wrong, is that you can't measure a battery drain. Well, we're not really measuring a battery drain per se, using an amp clamp. What we're doing is, we're seeing what exactly is drawing current after, say, an hour, when the car should not be awake. Now, by doing this, for example, all the rear fuses are zero. The main fuse box on this car, which I'll flash up on the screen for you. As you can see, there's lots of fuses. There was two fuses. There was a maxi fuse, this one here. This is the one we're talking about, what I've shown in the video. And it had a 0 0.3 millivolt voltage drop across the fuse. And that is the cast power supply. And it needs a big maxi fuse there because the cast powers the starter motor. There's a relay inside it. Now, the cast should be asleep. It was asleep because what I did after that was I scoped the K bus, or the K can, sorry. K can's asleep. And here's another view of what a K can looks like when it's awake. So the issue wasn't that there was a bus error and there was a unit not sleeping, there was a problem with an hardware error. And it turns out that the cash unit, this thing here, we changed it. We changed it for a used one that wasn't called into care, but the car went to sleep after 20 minutes immediately. So the clue for this when cars don't sleep is gear stick light stays on. Start stop button stays on sometimes too. <laughs> so the answer to the guy's question, the 0 0.3 millivolt drop, we use a table, we use this table here. This is a table from Power Probe. Pretty sure they won't mind me reproducing it. <laughs> and this Power Probe table, essentially, as we can read off the 0.3 millivolt, I don't think it gives a maxi fuse, but we'll use the biggest fuse. And we can see the, exactly that. It's on the car, it was 250 milliamps drain. Should be about 50 to 70 milliamps, and more so 50 on a car that doesn't have a battery drain. So, we're using that millivolt drop, but I don't really need to convert it because the idea of going across the fuse though, by the way, is that we convert the millivolt to milliamps and then we compare with an amp clamp the overall battery drain in the vehicle at the negative term of the battery with an amp clamp. And in theory, if you've only got one circuit pulling power, it should match the amp clamp reading across the fuse doing the millivolt drop. That's what our friend here doesn't understand because if he did, he wouldn't have made such a stupid comment. Sorry, that's wrong. I wouldn't say stupid. Ill-informed comment. Uh, I would judge it in the old days as if you're trying to be a smart ass. But listen, son, I've been doing this job for 32 years and sometimes I've been wrong and I've been arrogant and I've been just like you saying that's wrong and stuff like that. But actually, over the last 15 years or so, I've chilled out a bit and I just listen to people. So I thought we'd clear that up. Now, one other thing, on this particular car, there was another voltage drop, voltage drop across the fuse. There was something else pulling power, it was pulling over 1.1 amps. Now that's huge. The total drain in this car was just under 1.4 amps. And that was the CCC unit. Now, the CCC unit is dead. Dead as a doornail. And uh, basically, guy let me cross the road there. The CCC unit, I found out that was pulling and I matched the amp clamp reading of over one amp because I went across the fuse in exactly the same method. And you can see that right here. 
So by doing this method, I found, disconnected and isolated, two faulty components, which brought the overall drain down to, I think it was 0 0.04 uh, zero amps, so 40 milliamps. Now, if we don't use this method, I'm going uphill by the way, with the pram, baby's asleep. If we don't use this method, what we've just shown you there, which this guy says is incorrect, um, he's doing it the way he probably wants to do it, which is with an amp clamp or even disconnecting a negative terminal and put a fluke meter in series with the load. So you can't start the car, but you can lock it and you can observe it. It's more accurate that way. If we do it that way, it's a very accurate way of determining the overall battery drain, parasitic discharge. But by doing it that way, we don't know which circuit's affected. Now, you can take a photograph of all your fuses in your fuse box and pull the fuses one by one. However, the danger of doing that is you can end up forgetting where they go. Suddenly you realize your camera wasn't switched on and you, all the photos were shit. <laughs> then you're in a world of pain. And also the danger is on some cars, old Mercedes S-Class for example, from the early 2000s, it tends to wake things up when you pull fuses on and they don't go back to sleep. So it's not the best idea. So again, using the millivolt, milli, milliamp measurement is the best way to do it. If you look at this car, we split it into two circuits. We've got the rear battery and the rear fuse box. And what we did was with this, we just go up with the, take the negative uh, cable, amp clamp off the negative cable put it on the positive cable, we've got the same draw over one amp and we just go up the positive cable gradually and we go to the back fuse box and we find on the back fuse box we've got a zero drain then we go to the rest of the cable that feeds the front fuse box we've got over one amp drain by doing that with the amp clamp we just worked out the rear doesn't have any drain we just took 50% of the vehicle away from the fault finding tree now we only need to concentrate on the front, don't we? Again, car doesn't sleep, but the K can is sleeping. So most of the units that should be asleep are asleep in that sense. The problem, as we found out, was a knackered car. Some, probably some diode or some resistor or something on the board has failed capacitor or something like that. We don't know, I'm not an electronics expert. All I know is that when I disconnect the gas and the CCC, there is no drain. And there's two drains, like I said. And that's how you do it. That's why I do it that way. And I just wanted to make this video, not because I'm like, you know, me egos hurt and nothing like that, but because I think it's very important, especially for this guy who's posted, if he doesn't know. And actually, a young lad, I say a young lad, I haven't got a cook, could be 80 year old geriatric, who you knows? Some cool dude asked me, how do you get milli amps and milli volts? Well, I hope this now clears that up, that all we're doing is a voltage drop test. But of course, we can convert that to current because where there's voltage is current. So I hope that's cleared everything up for everybody. <laughs>